Top tip. Match the doofer up to the lotsa and then pump the thingy. This, this is one of the winners, so we got this one. Um, it's stuff called teal set. And this Something is... has just beeped. And I'm just wondering if your battery's gone charged. You had to ask, didn't you? Well, it's just the fact that I just heard a beep beep. That was going so well with this. I know, but I'm just checking. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Right, um, as you can see, we've got Mr. D with us today. And the reason for that is... Just a, a little aside before we get into the main video. Um, those of you watching, quite a few of you have seen us use our Mr. D thermal cooker. In fact, enough of you have seen us use our Mr. D thermal cooker that Mr. D, the company, not the cooker, has uh, actually contacted us and said, you guys are selling lots of these things. Here's an affiliate link, sell it through that, please. Which came as rather a surprise to us because we didn't actually know. So we now have an affiliate link, so if you do want to buy a Mr. D cooker, we'll put the link down below in future in our videos and it makes no difference to you guys, but we will get a small thank you from Mr. D every time you do it. So <laughs> it was a bit of a surprise to us, but we're, we're quite happy to endorse this wonderful product because it has made us happy so many times when we're out in the back end of beyond and we want a hot meal. So. And it really helps just sort of like being able to prepare the meal uh, before you go out. Yes, indeed. So um, that's the end of the Mr. D bit. We just thought we'd throw that in for you. So um, Mr. D can now go back to his cupboard. In this uh, video, Bev and I are going to cover two of the little topics um, in the Yachtmaster course. Uh, and they kind of like feed into each other um, because... Um, the, f the topic we're going to cover is preparing the boat for sea and for storms. But also, before you even prepare a boat for um, the sea and storms, you really do need to make sure that you've done what I call your routine maintenance and just make sure that your yacht is uh, as prepared as you can be uh, for, you, for, for your um, filters and all that sort of stuff. Um, so we're going to cover that as well. So that's our routine maintenance and checks. Yeah. Some people call us the Laurel and Hardy of sailing and things like that. I don't know whether there's any truth in that or not, but we're certainly very different in our approach to doing things. Um, Gainer is a little bit more bullet again. You know, um, we'll just charge ahead and I'm sure we'll be fine. We'll get there. Boom. Um, whereas I tend to think about what's the 67 things that could go wrong before we even do this. I was reading an article recently about what things to do in storms and it's one of the things that my well I don't panic about it but it's you know when you're going out it's on your mind and um I looked at it and I thought it's a very strange article because it's telling me to do all the things that quite frankly this boat doesn't leave the dock until we've done them and you know if you're out in the middle of a storm and it says you know consider putting the lifelines on when you see the storm come and I'm sitting looking and reading that and thinking why did you even leave port without the lifelines rigged? But that's... you can tell that Beth's a worry war. But <laughs> as somebody who's not a worry war, I have come to the conclusion that it's much better to have somebody who worries about these things before you do it. Because, um, say for instance, we were coming out of um, coming down, um, and this is when we do the pan, pan, pan. And um, Beverly says, I can smell something wrong. And we talked about what we were going to do or what we could do as an alternate plan. So when Beverly said, um, you know, oh, there's water in the uh, bilge, I already had the alternate plan. Actually, I think the phrase straight, I... to, straight to hand and I knew what I was going to do. I think the phrase I used was, there's a shed load of water in the engine and it's like a fire hose in there. Yeah, but regardless, because we discussed it, yeah, we actually knew what to do because Beverly worries about these things, and um, you know. But it's all about preparing your boat for sea, and how you can prepare your boat for storms, and we prepare our boat for storms before we leave the dock. 
Yeah. <laughs> it's that simple. This can be divided up into two bits, in my opinion. It can be divided up into problems you stop by just doing things regularly and problems you stop by preparing for them, which you might argue is the same thing, but I'd argue that it's not the same thing. For instance, engine maintenance. If you don't maintain your engine, sooner or later it's going to quit. It's that simple. Um, and even when you do maintain it, it can still quit. I mean, we had an exhaust elbow burn through, we've had a starter motor seize up, so, you know, it can go wrong. But I know for a fact if I don't look after the engine that it will sooner or later gum up. Whereas there are other things, like when you see a storm coming, you make sure that all your hatches are closed, you make sure your lifelines are on, you make sure your through holes are all shut. But those sorts of items we do before we leave port. And the other sort of items, like engine maintenance, we do by doing, strangely enough, engine maintenance. So one of the things we do is we put a fuel conditioner in our diesel, um, which doesn't really sound like engine maintenance or storm prevention stuff, but it is because if this stuff kills off diesel bug, then that's one less thing that's going to gum your engine shut. Because when you're in a storm weather, your boat's going to get thrown around, any diesel bug in your tank's going to get mixed into your diesel supply, and it's going to gum your filters up. So don't have any diesel bug. Straightforward stuff. Now this stuff here, got a lot of good reviews, it's stuff called Fuel Set. This is probably about a two year supply, and it costs £25. Um, but as well as killing the bug, apparently it dissolves their pathetic sad little bodies into the diesel and it then passes through the system, gets burnt in the engine and goes out the exhaust. So since we've been using it, we've noticed that our filters have been... Are cleaner. Our diesel filters are cleaner. Our, our last set were so clean we considered putting them back in. <laughs> but we didn't. <laughs> but we thought about it. <laughs> yeah. And you need very, very little of this. Um, so we've written the dosages on the bottle in Sharpie because the last time I used this I put four times the recommended dose in. And then our diesel filters, which we've got two of, um, we have a coarse fuel filter um, and uh, here's Beverly showing <laughs> not being able to, uh, forgetting how to actually change a coarse filter. We were having uh, problems with our um, coarse fuel filter and it's because we'd forgotten that you have to undo the bolt on top. It raises another point. If you do get a gummed up filter and you're bouncing around like a cork in a stormy situation, do you really want to be trying to change a filter? Uh, the answer is no. You and, get into some real serious... Uh... And to be honest, that particular one, I've forgotten there was a nut on top. And so what we did there is we got off the boat and went and asked somebody, how do you get this filter off? And he said, oh, there's a nut on top. And they go, but if you're out in the middle of a storm, that's not going to happen. There's nobody to get off the boat and go and talk to. Yeah. So, um, you know, the coarse filters and the fine fuel filter uh, needs changing every uh, 100 hours. And, um, I thought it was every 200. No, it, yes, yeah, sorry. It's 100 for the oil and it's 200, 200 for the diesel. Easy. And even, even the simple stuff, like the highly accessible stuff, like changing coolant. <laughs> well, watch this. Can, kindly pour that without spilling a drop. I'm doing it. It's going very slowly, but I am doing it. Okay, so now you know. <laughs> it's still not going to save you from um, situations where the engine sounds like this. No. And to give you a hint, that's the starter motor <laughs> starting to fail. On the other side of the thing is checklists. And um, I mean, regular maintenance will stop some problems cropping up. That's good. That eliminates one source of worry. But then there is checklists because when you get the boat ready to go to sea, there's a lot of things to do and you can forget them. And one of the items on our checklist is make sure the electric cable's aboard because I've seen so many videos on YouTube of people going off the dock and the, and the plug going boom like that there and winding up in the drink. Um, or if it's a particularly good cable they've got, the boat coming to stop. Um, so, you know, put that on because in the running around, it'd be so easy to forget. Okay, dokie. So, um, so some of the things that are on our checklist are the oil, the fan belt and strainer. So, uh, and then the next thing on our checklist is our through holes. Well, it's actually about halfway down. <laughs> okay, fair enough. So what's next on the checklist then, Bev? I don't know. It's way over there. I can't read it from this distance. <laughs> um, 
But there's things on it like, uh, like she says, do the three holes. Don't go to see where your three holes open. If a hose pops off or a wave slams in and, and, and wrecks something, it's better to have them closed. Um, with the through holes, um, what I always think of is the fact that, um, <clears throat> you know, when you can create a siphon um, and when you're uh, healed, the our, our sink through holes, which are normally out of the water, are in the water. Are in the water. So um, you know those ones can a siphon can be generated, and all of a sudden you've got water coming out of the sink. Yeah. Plus, I I get haunted by things I've seen, and I've seen one boat on YouTube sink because of the through hole being left open, and this siphon effect that Gainer's talking about. I've seen another boat sink within the last twelve months because a hose popped off. The, um, the tail of the um, through hull and it had been left open. And that was a very expensive, expensive boat. boat. And it went uh, straight to the bottom. If that through hull had been closed, um, the hose probably wouldn't have popped off, but even if it did pop off, um, water wouldn't have come into the boat. Yeah. So, um, so that's why we have another checklist for when we're leaving the boat, which actually does include close all our through hulls. Mm -hmm. Um, just so that we don't have... Another little item that we do um, regularly, when we're out sailing, we put the jack stays or, or the lifelines down on the deck um, and we would generally leave them there. We Once we put them on when we're out sailing, we leave them there, but we've taken them off for the winter. But they're on the checklist, just to make sure. I mean, nobody should have taken them off during the night, but they're there anyway. Um, when we... Um with regard to the jack stays, we have uh, two different type of uh, tethers on Salty Lass. Um, the first type of tether is um, a long tether, and that tether we only use in the cockpit so that we can still do all the sail manoeuvres and all that sort of stuff. Um, but it's a long, um, yes, the, the long tether. The cockpit has four tether points, one at each corner of the cockpit. So by clipping onto them, we can still move about the cockpit. Yeah. Uh, and then we have another set of tethers, which is the ones that we go forward. And they're called, they're like Y, y tethers. And you uh, attach at the middle part of the uh, tether. Um, and then you've got two one metre lengths. You've got two one metre lengths. That's so that, you know, you're only on a one metre length, so you shouldn't fall over, off board, overboard because you've only got one metre. Um, but then, because you've got another two metre length, I can move about and I can move to one of our hard points, which is, say, the mast, and do things on the mast if I need to. But the advantage of this tether is that... You can clip onto one before you take the other off. Yeah, and I've had to do that because um, when we went round um, Chicken Rock, um, our sail was coming up out of the bag. Um, and I had to go forward in storm conditions just to tether it down because um, Beverly and I were both concerned about it coming out and um, mm -hmm. going all over the place. So... Uh, having the um, Y-shaped tether for going forward is really good. Now the checklist isn't cast in stone. Occasionally we come across things and the checklist has to be updated. We come across one recently where somebody said if you were sailing out of the harbour and your engine failed, what would you do? Would you unfurl the sail? And we thought, well, we couldn't unfurl the sail because our furling line is always kept away and we couldn't pull the sail out. Yeah. So a, an item will now be put on the checklist to loosen some of the length of the furling line so that if we're in harbour and moving along and the engine fails, we can let enough sail out to maintain boat control. We don't need a full 125% jenny out, but we need something. Yeah. Um, another thing that's going on the uh, checklist, because we do actually do this, um, is just to check the coolant levels. Um, so um, I'm going to add that to the checklist so it's not set in stone. Uh, admittedly, I didn't add it because it would have been the column too wide. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah. Fair enough. We've um, done this um, Yacht Master, cover some of the things in the Yacht Master today. But what we really do need is your help because um, what we need to know is because we can't go sailing, unfortunately. So, is there anything that you want us to cover? We want to achieve our goal, which is the Yacht Master and um, 
you know that is one of our goals but if there's a topic on the yacht master you want us to cover then you know to please give us a comment down below because you know yes we'd like to be doing the 600 nautical miles that we want to do um but we can't do that so let's cover something else that's all still on the yacht master course yeah basically we need your help please help <laughs> We're stuck here in lockdown, let us out. <laughs> well, of course, as soon as we're allowed out, we'll be out. <laughs> we'll be out like the clappers, but um, we just don't know exactly what's going to happen. But life's like that. Mm.